Gucci just launched their men's fall collection without a creative director at the helm. And it felt grounded and commercially safe. The embellishments we've grown so accustomed to, gone. The eccentricity, dialed down. Out with the loud aesthetic, in with the basics. The collection presented an overall understated luxury, which we'll start dissecting today by recreating this piece, which one of our lovely patrons suggested. This video will be split into two parts. The first one is about designing the garment, while the second half shows how you can render it. The second part is exclusive to our Patreons. Let's get started. And here we are inside a Clow 3D. You want to go to the Avatar tab, Male V2, and let's select the standard avatar. Now we want to go into the Garment tab, and you could start with the male base t-shirt, but I've gone ahead and modified it for whenever you want to design blazers, and this is of course part of our Patreon if you guys want to join it and have access to this file. If not, you can just screenshot and grab it from here. Before we start making any modifications, we need to form a plan. Having a vision around the object that you are trying to shape is crucial. And given how gravity works, your base should be around the shoulders, which is where the garment actually starts and go your way towards the bottom. The reason being that, if I were to alter the shoulders, it would influence the rest of the garment without any exceptions. If I were to alter the base, make it shorter or make it longer, it's not gonna influence the rest of the garment by much. And this is why you want to set your structure starting from the top. Same with trousers, you would start around the waistline, but with blazers, you wanna do it from the shoulders. Let me show you another technique. So as you're forming your plan, you might want to see how the garment fits around your avatar. You wanna go into the texture tab and choose the translucent surface, which is gonna allow you to see the fabric all around the avatar. So you know where your pressure points are, where the garment is slightly larger than it should be. In this case, we want a large blazer, but if you were to make a t-shirt, you would probably cut a tiny bit into here. Let's select the shoulder line, and currently it has those bezier curves, which are standard within Clo. if you were to work from the base t-shirt, but I want to delete them and have a proper straight line. Same at the back, let's delete the curved handles. Perfect. And now we wanna go back to the textured view. Simulate. What I want to do next is extend this point towards the right by 20 mil in order to bring the shoulder line out. I want to do the same at the back. I'm only going to do it by 10 mil here. And I want to extend it here by 10 mil as well. There we go. In order to bring the line closer to the neck. In this design, I want the neckline to be hugging the neck of the avatar. Let's press B and make sure that those segments are equal, which they currently are not. This one is shorter at 224, 226 by, as you can see, close to the cursor, 1.5 mil. So my options are either I shorten this one or extend this one. Let's shorten this one by 1.5. You select the dot, make sure it's highlighted in a pink, so it follows the original line. Type in 1.5, and now we can check again, press B. And now they're equal, which is perfect. Now I want to select this segment here and make it larger by 35 mil. I'm gonna do the same for the front, but not 35. I wanna do it by 44 in this case. Okay, simulate, have a look from the front. Now let's select the armpit points, both of them, and move them down by quite a bit, 92.5 mil. We want the opening to be much, much larger to accommodate for our sleeves. Let's simulate again. Press V, select those two points, move them in by 15 mil. Also select the one at the top, move it towards the right by 5 mil. At the back, I want to move this one towards the left by 10 mil. The reason being, I want this curve to be less pronounced. I want it to cut into the front and back panels slightly less than it currently is. I want to also add a curve point here in order to smooth out the curve that we have between the front and back panels. When I align them, I should have a smooth 
curve between them and that's also gonna apply with the sleeves. I'm gonna show you when we create them exactly what I mean. Let's press V. Also move this point in a tiny bit. Let's do it by four mil. Next, we need to lengthen the front and the back panels and I'm gonna do it by 180 millimeters. That's 18 centimeters. We can press B and delete the front sewing line. Since this is a bit of a hybrid blazer, I would put it in the category of double-breasted. We need to extend the segments at the front so they overlap and I'm gonna do it by 40 mil. Let's now grab this point here and move it towards the right. Let's do 83 mil. Let's move it lower down. 28. Now I need to grab the Bezier curve, move it back in so it's hugging the neck a bit more. Let's do it by the same amount, 83 mil. And since I want the left side to be on top of the right side, it's probably not the worst idea to do it now, as you are simulating, of course. It is now time to create the sleeves, and I'm, I'm gonna do that by selecting the rectangle tool. I'm gonna make a standard shape, and now I need to form it. I add two curve points close to one another towards the center, and I start bringing them up by quite a bit because we want the sleeves to be pointy. If I were to make this slope lower, it's going to be a sloped shoulder, which is not what we want, especially not with the current trends and with the piece that we're trying to follow. I also want to add some points here, close to the edge. We need to make sure that this segment and this segment, wherever they meet, they have a very smooth curve between them. And you can see that in the 2D window. If I do this, if I split the panels, cut and sew, and move them here. As you can see, this is very smooth now, and this is gonna ensure that we can do not only the sewing much, much easier, but it also influences how the fit is going to work and why is that? Because if you have a straighter line, it's gonna be much more awkward to raise your hand. You're not gonna have the same mobility, so you want to make sure that you have those curves. I'm gonna control Z so they merge back together. And now we need to do a measurement. I'm gonna measure the back and the front panel, 774.3, I need to open up my calculator, 774.3 and divide it by the length of this segment here, 903.4. We need to shift the dot by two digits towards the right in order to read it as a percentage. So we know that we need to make this entire piece 85.71 of what it currently is. So 85, I press A and scale it now, 85.71. Make sure that you're grabbing one of the corners so you're not doing it just horizontally or vertically. And now we can check, press Z, select those two again, 774.3, 774.3, they match perfectly. Now I want to select the sleeve, bring up the arrangement points, which are located here. I can now apply the sleeve very easily on the avatar. I want to start from the front and go all the way towards the back. And now I need to hold down shift and sew it, starting from the front panel and towards the back, from the shoulder and down. Okay, and when I release shift, the sewing is going to be applied. Get rid of the arrangement points, simulate, and let's have a look at the piece. I, of course, also want to sew those segments together. Okay, select the sleeve, control H, strengthen it, press A. Let's now select the sleeve, control D, and symmetrize it on the opposite side with sewing. Now let's go into the avatar tab, male V2, pose, and let's select the one where he has his hands next to his body to have a better look at the fit. As you can see, we're getting quite close. I like the way it sits, but I see an issue here, which is when I'm looking at the sleeves, they seem to hold some sort of tension, and I've developed a way of making this tension go away and look more natural. The reason why it looks like this, let me first give you an explanation, is when I select those sewing lines and go into the property editor, I can see that the fold angle is 180 degrees, meaning that Clo by default, makes this line at 180 degrees. So in my case, the sleeves are hanging out and then they go down with gravity. But what we want to see them is go straight down as they would in reality. How do we do that? Well, we need to only select the upper part of the sewing line at the front and at the back and make it not 180 degrees, but rather a lower value. And this is how we do it. You press B, select the sewing line, lift it up. 
Go on the coinciding front panel, do the same. Let's now do the back. Lift this one up, I only want to leave the sewing lines at the top. Okay, make sure this one matches. Now I'm gonna press M, start with the sleeve, connect the front, start again with the sleeve, connect the back. Perfect. Now I want to press B and select those two sewing lines and as I am simulating after I press space, I want to change the fold angle. And just look at it. Look what it does. This is how it would look in reality after you're actually sewing those components together. The angle should be probably around 130 and you can increase the strength if you want, maybe by a tiny bit, you don't have to overdo it. Next, let's address the collar. I want to press Z and I need to measure the segment at the back plus the one at the front. So I need to hold down shift as I'm selecting both and I get the value on 183.8. Press S for the rectangle tool, 183.8 by 50 mil. Z, I want to select this dot here and delete it. M, start sewing from the back towards the front. Hold down shift and connect the two segments. Release and now it's gonna get sewn together. Right click in the 3D window, superimpose side. In this case, simulate, select the piece, Control H, simulate again. And now we want to symmetrize it on the opposite side, Command D or Control D on Windows. And also strengthen it. We also need to sew it together by pressing N. Okay, and last but not least, and this is very important, we want to, when we're looking in the 3D view, make this line look straighter. And this is how we achieve that. We press V and start curving the collar piece. Simulate, and as you can see, now it's straighter. Meaning that when I add the lapel, it's gonna look a lot better because it has a perfectly straight line that it can connect with. Before we proceed with the lapel, I need to show you how you can tailor the blazer and make it sit more on the body of the avatar or your client when you do it in the real world. I'm gonna press G and let me start from, say, this point. I can adjust it later down the line. Click here, go up so it aligns close to where the sleeve armpit ends. Okay, and this is the initial shape that I'm gonna create. Right click, cut. I need to eliminate those segments for now. I'm gonna delete them. And next up, we need to fix some issues. The main idea is that I need to eliminate fabric towards the interior of the front component and I need it to align with the waistline of the avatar, which, let me show you in the 3D window, is probably around here. I need to make sure that where the waistline aligns, you have a wider cutout. I'm gonna shape it like this, then I need to bring those segments closer to one another to make sure that the fabric, when it gets sewn together, is not puckering. Okay. As you can imagine, this segment to this one is going to connect and this one is going to connect to this one. And I also want to slightly angle those components. So I'm going to select those dots here, press N, connect those segments together, connect those segments together and simulate. And as you can see, this is going to start shaping your blazer to sit more on the body of the avatar. When you do in women's wear, those features can be even further exaggerated for men's wear and for our use case. It shouldn't be probably as dramatic as it currently is. I'm gonna reduce that. And I also need to make sure that the segments themselves are equal or very close to equal in length. 289.6. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller, the cutout. I'm gonna decrease this one. 291.7. 291.7. Okay, let's simulate. And I'm quite happy with the result, actually. Yeah, I guess I can leave it like this for now. Oh, and I can also bring this point slightly closer. So it releases even more of the tension. It probably created some new issues. Yeah, as you can see here on the side, uh, since I move the segments about and I move the dots, you need to make sure that you're readjusting your sewing lines, as I am doing in this case here. That's gonna release even more of the tension. Perfect, let's have a look from the front and I'm quite happy with the result. Let's now start working on the lapel. 
Looking at the Gucci design at the reference, we know that the lapel should start even from around the neck area, which is quite further up. I'm gonna press X and I'm gonna split this segment, let's say 70 mil for now, we can adjust it later. And I need to do a measurement now. I know that the lapel starts here and it goes all the way to this point here. So I need to measure those segments together by holding down shift. 594.7 594.7 And let's make it by 120 for now. Rotate it at 90 degrees by holding down shift. And then we need to sew it. I'm gonna press M. I can start with the lapel. Hold down shift now. And connect everything together. Perfect. Now we go into the 3D window, select the newly created segment, right click, superimpose over. Okay, press 2, so we go to the front view, and I need to delete the dot here. Very good. Control H, stop the simulation, press B, select the sewn segments, and go into the sewing line type, make sure it's on turned. Turn means that it can sit flush with the surface that it's sitting above or beneath. Now when I simulate, you're gonna see the improvement. Let's now start shaping this lapel by selecting the extremity, bringing it down quite a bit, maybe even further down and more towards the arm. I think this will suffice. Now I press X. I need to split this segment up and I need to bring the point in. Now I wanna press V and adjust the curve slightly. Even though it looks perfectly geometric, it does so because it's sitting from a perspective, but you do need to add a bit of curve here. And then we can also curve in this area, curve in this area here. Okay, that's a bit exaggerated, don't do it as much. Let's try a tiny bit less. And I'm quite happy with the result. Maybe bring the point in a tiny bit. Select it with the A tool, Control D, symmetrize it on the opposite side, Control H, press B, make sure that it's unturned, which it is because it's been uh, symmetrically copied. Simulate, wait for it to do its thing. If it doesn't, you can always right click, superimpose over, and now it's gonna work flawlessly. We need to select this segment here, hold down Shift, and select this segment as well, 247.5. Rectangle tool, 247.5, let's say by 50 mil for now. And we start sewing as we did before from the back. Sew the segment, the longer one first. Hold down shift. Okay, you're gonna match perfectly. Superimpose and you've guessed it, over in our case. Press B, make sure that the angles are unturned. Control H, strengthen it. Control D, duplicate it on the opposite side. Control H, go in the 3D window at the back, sew it all together. As you can imagine, if I were to connect it now to the rest of the lapel, it would pull up. So what we need to do is to do a slight adjustment. I can take this point and extend it till it looks about right. Slightly shorter. And now I'm happy. I can press M and start sewing it to the lapel. This is on the right side. I need to do it here, and it's gonna do it on the opposite side as well. Let's address now the sleeves, which are probably the most eye-catching element of the entire design. I'm gonna press G and create an internal line parallel to the ground, right-click, cut and sew. I'm gonna strengthen them again. Perfect, and now we need to adjust the sewing. Press B, zoom in. And let's sew them on the left and on the right side accordingly. Press M. Let's try similar values, it doesn't have to be perfect, we're just testing it out for now. But I do see a difference in the Gucci piece, I feel like the upper part is much wider than the lower one. And that gives us a different kind of effect. Let's try it out now, extend the segment by 25. B, adjust the sewing line so they match in length. And this looks a lot more like it, because we have this component overlapping the bottom component of the sleeve. Let's now address the front panel. I'm gonna select this point and bring it in. Let's try it for 70 mil. And now I want to create some extra dots here so I can uh, add a bit of a curve. Okay, those are gonna hold the shape in place. Now I want to convert the point 
in the corner to a curve point and now adjust it so it looks more flowy and organic in shape. Let's add some pockets. I want to select this segment to figure out the length of it. I'm not gonna make the pocket as wide so it doesn't go right to the edge. I'm gonna make it probably, let's say 170 by 50 mil. M. And let's sew it here. Go into the 3D window, right click, superimpose over. Okay, press B. Make sure that the sewing is on turned. Control H to strengthen it. Let's do the same on the opposite side. Control D to duplicate it. Control H. And it's already on turn since I symmetrized it. Great. Now, let's add some... Hmm. Should we address the aesthetics? I feel like we're getting very close to the final result. And for aesthetics, I'm just gonna add some buttons. When you're doing an actual production piece, the buttons are opposite to how I'm gonna do them now. Of course, you do the ornamental ones first, and then you need to place them on this side for it to show on the opposite side. But I feel like when you're working in Clo, it's not as relevant because people are not gonna zoom in and actually look inside of your garment. This is only a reference for the tailor. You can use the edit button tool in order to move them around. You can do that in the 3D window as well, if you feel like you're gonna be more accurate. Let's duplicate it. Bring it here, and I'm quite happy. I feel like maybe I should move this entire segment so it's not uh, overlapping so close to where the button is located. Let's add those three on the opposite side as well. Let's see what they look like. As you can imagine, it's sitting underneath this one. This one should show up, yeah, and this one too. Cool. And now we want to go and make them look symmetrical to your eye because they're not going to be symmetrical necessarily on the on the pattern. I can go into the 2D window, select everything, and I can go into the collision simulation properties for collision. Let's make it 3 mil and 3 mil for rendering as well. And this is going to make everything look thicker. And what would this project be without a bit of fabric added to it? I'm gonna add some custom maps that I have for the default fabric. Go into the texture, open this one up. Let me find the fabric. I'm gonna add it to the Patreon so you guys can dabble with it too. British Beauty, we have this one here. First add the texture, which means albedo, which means color. Then you need to add the normal. British Beauty and now the normal. I need to select everything, press Ctrl H and have a look. And as you can imagine, okay, this is very far from the source, but this is how you can take a fabric and edit it inside of Clo. You could do this in Photoshop, but it's a bit more of a hassle. First of all, take this option here, desaturation. This is of course gonna get rid of the color, but we can do even further adjustments. This takes care of everything that is uh, dark, so shadow intensity. This takes care of everything that is bright. You scroll further down, go into color, and let's try and nail the shade if we can. I'm gonna try this shade here. And now, with regards to the size of the texturing, there are multiple ways of addressing this. You could go into the default fabric and change the values here under transformation manually, if you know you have an exact value that you need to use. But you can do it more on the aesthetic side by selecting one of the panels with this tool edit texture and now we need to scale them down and it's gonna do that to every single component that uses this fabric probably something like this and we need to address the color again I need to make it lighter than it currently is of course if you want to do fabrics properly and you want to ensure that the fabric that you're using inside a clo is the same one that you have in the real world you need to scan them digitally, or you could, of course, use the fabrics that we have on our platform. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to take out and eliminate any guesswork on your side. And then the next part, I'm gonna show you guys how you can render your product, how you need to export it, and how to render inside of Blender. 